Hi oh guys, it is a gorgeous evening here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. The sun has gone down and getting dark, so I better get on it on this Friday, March 10th, 2023 in the great state of Texas. I understand the biggest party on the planet is kicking off in Austin, Texas, about an hour from here, and the little dog and I are going to hang out here instead of joining the biggest party in the on the planet and uh, do what we do every Friday or try to do, and that is our ecological meltdown roundup. Where once again we go over to mongabay.com mongabay.com to see what our friends Rhett Butler and the boys and girls have on their mind in their weekly cavalcade of catastrophe here. Alright, we're going to start out in Indonesia. Yes, where I have been laughing about this story for years about Indonesia's plan to build its new capital city on an expiring logging concession in eastern Borneo has sparked concerns about environmental and human rights observers about the larger eco-social impacts on the rest of the island. Yes, Joko Widodo, President Joko Widodo, and if Joko Widodo says it's true, makes a promise, you know it has to be true, he has made glowing promises of a green and sustainable development, claiming mineral, minimal forest clearance, blah, blah, blah. Um, Manga Bay visited the site and has found clearing of mangroves and high conservation forest areas, land conflicts with indigenous communities, and potentially large scale displacements are already happening, calling into question whether the $34 billion project's benefits will outweigh its downsides. Yeah, moving uh, Jakarta, Indonesia over to Borneo, which you know what, you know, what they're doing uh, is just abandoning all of those uh, slum dwellers in that uh, shithole pit. Jakarta, <coughs> moving it, we're moving to Borneo for our sustainable community while uh, you folks just, you, you know, fend for yourself in your shanty towns. <coughs> well, I've already mentioned this two or three times this week, so we're just going to leave the question open. As UN members clinch historic high seas biodiversity treaty, what is in it? There you go. What is in it? <laughs> okay. We're not going to get off on that because, good lord, darkness is settling. All right. What is going on in Cambodia this week? Logged and loaded Cambodian prison official suspected in massive legalized logging operation. Yes, a Manga Bay investigation indicates that a three-star military general who also just happens to serve as a top interior ministry official appears to be the notorious illegal logger himself known as Akna Che. Hmm. So, uh, I guess family and business ties link this fellow to logging operations 
that satellite imagery shows are clearing forest well outside their concession boundaries. Hmm. Officials could not give a clear answer as to why the concession had been awarded to the guy. While the Interior Ministry ignored Mangabe's questions. Imagine that. Okay. What is going on in the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative this week? Chinese funded bridge threatens Paradise Reef in southern Philippines. <clears throat> Samal Island, a popular tourist destination in the southern Philippines, is fringed by a 300 meter, a 1,000 foot coral system known as Paradise Reef, which hosts more than 100 coral species. Hmm. But a plan to build a bridge, you know, financed by China, linking I guess the vow to Samal threatens to destroy the reef. Scientists and conservation is warm. Hmm. Imagine that the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative destroying an ecosystem. All right. Here is the, you know, uh, Manga Bay is going to be the biggest champion of Lula. Saving the planet, you go, uh, Presidente Lula, you save the planet. So, uh, you know, all of this story about restoration, you know, and I'm all for restoring ecosystems, you know, here is how restoration turns pastures into wildlife haven in Brazil's Atlantic forest. You know, basically what they're talking about is how you make a human exclusion zone uh, out, out of a piece of land and it gets restored. Now, you know these restoration things, the humans go in there and plant some trees, which is real big of the humans, since it's the humans who took the trees out. Uh, go in there, plant some trees, get the hell out of there, and watch the land be restored. This is all it's doing to me is adding evidence that the way to restore a planet is to get the humans out of there. All right. Okay, I need to watch. I, I have not watched uh, this week's video because I know exactly what these planet eaters, I guess, are feeling like. Uh, this video is from the Intag Valley in, <laughs> in Ecuador. Defending the Intag Valley, 30 years of community resistance. As someone, you know, I was run out of the Intag Valley. Uh, when was I run out? I, in 2011. Uh, I was basically, you know, you know, told by the gringo expats living down there, and good for them. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm cheering these guys on, but uh, if uh, this Chinese copper mine uh, is dealing with any uh, of the hostility that I was, good lord, I went in there. I was trying to build a tiny house in the Intag Valley. And uh, the reception I got from my fellow expat gringos, good lord, you do not want to mess with the uh, with those uh, militant gringos defending the Intag Valley, so uh, a Chinese copper mine does not threaten their uh, beautiful, you know, second homes, their expat homes. But, you know, hey, man, I'll take my planet defenders wherever I can get them. It's very strange how the, the picture of the people in the Intag Valley fighting this big planet-eating copper mine for 30 years, they all look like Ecuadorians. I don't see one gringo in this picture. 
Uh huh. I cannot imagine why they're, you know, they're playing, you know how they're playing the story. Uh, but whatever it takes, the ends justify the means. And, and, and congratulations to those gringos for keeping, uh, you know, for those honky gringos keeping those Chinese planet eaters and those, what did they call me? I was a rich real estate developer wanting to sell the Intag Valley to my rich friends from Texas uh, was the charge against me when I was being tarred and feathered and run out of the, <laughs> the Intag Valley. <clears throat> All right. That old Indonesia just can't get a break from, uh, from Manga Bay. Indonesia aims to use natural gas in foreign funded energy transition why critics while critics cry foul indonesia plans to convert its diesel fuel fired power plants to gas fired power plants starting this year as part of its energy transition program yes uh, the plan has been lambasted by activists who see the gas conversion project as a false solution to climate change due to methane emissions that come from leakage. <clears throat> activists also point out that natural gas is more costly than renewable energy and the development of gas could take away funding and resources from renewable development so I don't know what term they're using for renewables in Indonesia okay we mentioned this last week about how Bolivia uh, is you know making all of these promises to clean up its mercury problem from gold mining now this week struggles loom as Bolivia prepares new plan to clean up its mercury problem, Bolivia's failure to combat illegal gold mining led to an international outcry last year as deforestation and mercury pollution continue to run rampant. So the government of Bolivia is planning, saying they're out on the job to take care of it However, some critics say the Bolivian government has, has a bad track record for implementing sweeping industry regulations, which might look good on paper, but fall flat in practice. Major road building investments in mining areas you can probably say Chinese Belt and Road Initiative here, just a guess, could also increase illegal activity at the same time as it will be easier for heavy machinery to access rural areas, you know, on the new roads. Okay, from Bolivia back to Indonesia. Poor Indonesia. What do you think is going on with Indonesia's mangrove restoration? Indonesia's mangrove restoration will run out of land well short of target, study warns. Hmm. The Indonesian government's mangrove restoration plan faces a major hurdle. Less than a third of the target area is actually viable for mangrove restoration. Hmm. <laughs> oh, anyway. Okay, let's go, you know, these little, these little, uh, each week we get three little miniature bullets from Sub-Saharan Africa. Okay. Let's see, we're going to start out in the Democratic Republic of Congo where activists say Canada-based miner Alphamine Bisse has been operating 
outside of its concession in the North DRC and encroaching into community forests. Gee, didn't we just hear that story five minutes ago from Cambodia? All right. Police in South Africa have arrested seven activists protesting against Anglo-American platinum for, for, for what they say is the mining giant's failure to report back on its social and work co commitments to the mining affected community. Huh. Here we go. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up, guys. In Sri Lanka, activists push for ban on using human contraceptive jabs on animals. I didn't realize we had human contraceptive jabs in Sri Lanka, but uh, I think we should start using human contraceptive jabs on humans. And if there are any non-human contraceptive jabs, let's start using them on humans too. All right. Now this one is getting, the, the story itself, it, it gets way too complicated. Amazon deforestation linked to reduced snow in Tibet in Antarctic ice loss. This is this big study looking at all of these global uh, weather, weather patterns connecting the dots between cutting trees down in the Amazon rainforest and the Antarctic ice melting. Okay. I don't know what the word seamount. I have never read the word seamount. Spelled S-E-A-M-O-U-N-T. I have no clue what a seamount is. But even though I have no clue what the hell a seamount is, and they don't define the term seamount, at least in here, I can still answer the question, and so can you. The question is, will new bottom trawling rules do enough to protect South Pacific seamounts? You don't need to know what the hell a seamount is to know the answer to the question is no. No. New bottom trawling rules do not do it. You know, is they will not do enough to protect South Pacific seamounts, whatever the hell a South Pacific seamount is makes no difference. Alright. Oh, and my computer just wants, I don't know why my up and down scroll bu button is not working on this computer. Okay, gee, we have two more palm oil giant corporations exiting one of the, the, these bullshit forest protection sustainability groups. Not the round table, they, they're probably already gone from the round table on sustainable palm oil. Uh, this is some other, you know, unadulterated horseshit. One of these things talking about how palm oil corporations are saving the planet. Environmentalists say this latest just walking out. It is just no longer even pretending. Environmentalists say this points to a startling, a startling industry trend in which industry giants are shirking their responsibility for their harmful business practices. Yes, a startling trend. This is, 
this is certainly a startling trend when industry giants are shirking their responsibility for their harmful business practices. Industry giants do not have, okay, they do not have any responsibility for their harmful business practices. In order to shirk something, I think if I understand the definition of shirk, in order to shirk something, you have to have something to shirk. If you never had anything to shirk, you can't shirk your responsibilities you never had. But anyway, now that we've cleaned up their grammar, moving on. There we go. Brazil's indigenous group demand a voice in new railway project, probably part of the uh, part of the uh, Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, which also includes railroads. I've been talking about this. The Ferro Growl Railway Project. Uh, yeah, it's, it's got to be. Uh, has been met with resistance from the region's indigenous peoples who will be impacted, blah, blah, blah. They're saying uh, the, rail, the railroad will cross several indigenous territories in the Xingu River Basin, something that could see more than 568,000 acres of rainforest, you know, just obliterated off the face of the planet in indigenous territories in the state of Mato Grosso by 2035. After the project was suspended by Brazil's Supreme Court in 2021, you know, even with uh, Bozo Nero at the helm, uh, even with him at the helm, the Supreme Court suspended it in 2021, but guess what? It has since been marked as a priority by the current government. There you go. Marked as a priority by the current government. I'm assuming they're talking Lula here. You notice how Rhett Butler uh, is not going to mention St. Lula's name in this. I, I, I'm just guessing, guys. I could be way off base here. I don't think so. Don't tell me uh, that Rhett Butler uh, did not take a red pen and, and change Lula's name to the current government. So, uh, you, you know, Manga Bay readers, uh, would, would not understand who is supporting the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative uh, obliterating 568,000 acres of rainforest out of the Brazilian Amazon. But if anyone wants to research that and tell me I'm wrong, I will be the first to admit it, and I hope that I am, but I don't think I am. Okay, we're going to go over to Sub-Saharan Africa, to the shithole country of the Republic of the Congo, which I don't think is the same as the Democratic Republic of Congo, but I'm not sure. You will not believe this. Guys, this is why I depend on Mangabe.com. I never would have figured this out on my own. This is why we need Rhett Butler, uh, you know, waving is he waving the red flag or the white flag? Would you believe, guys, that deforestation threatens local populations in the Republic of the Congo? Huh. Between May of 2021 and November of 2022, more than 200,000, more than 200,000 deforestation alerts were recorded 
around uh, some town that I can't pronounce in the northwestern Republic of the Congo where logging has drastically impacted the country's forest cover. Do you think so? In 2016, the Congolese government awarded 2 million hectares, otherwise known as almost 5 million acres of logging concessions to businesses, the majority of which had broken environmental and social standards. Hmm. And more recently, mining by Chinese-owned companies, can you say Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, uh, has accelerated the destruction of ecosystems as the land in Northwest Congo is rich in iron and gold. We can kiss goodbye the uh, Congo. Oh, gee, uh, how about this no shit Char Sherlock headline? Orangutan death in Sumatra points to human wildlife conflict. Take a wild guess who lost the conflict. Uh, good lord. Uh, the coffee farmers who caught the adult male orangutan on January 20th, 20th denied ever hitting it, but a post-mortem showed a backbone fracture, internal bleeding, and other indications of blunt force trauma. Yes. Uh, conservationists say the case is a setback in their efforts to raise awareness about the need to protect critically endangered orangutans. Do you think so? Uh, here we go. <laughs> For our, our knee slapper of the week. Agroecology is a poverty solution in Haiti. Yes. Haiti is facing a political and economic crisis. Functional governance that serves the interest of Haiti's people is largely non-existent. But we're going to bring in agroecology into Haiti where a functional government is non-existent. We're going to save Haiti with agroecology. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. All uh, right. Uh, anyway, guys, it is dark. Uh, here is how climate change is exacerbating human wildlife conflict. You will not believe it. We're going to go over to the shit all country of Nigeria. Brought down by gold, communities and nature suffer in, amid Nigerian gold mining bonanza. Commercial scale gold miners are wreaking havoc in southwestern Nigeria. Do you think so? Local officials largely condone these often illegal activities, while the federal authorities have been slow to crack down. Hmm. Affected community members say the miners are destroying their crops, polluting their land, and contaminating their water sources with mercury and lead. <clears throat> The gold rush is pro is profiting is profiting a small handful of local Nigerian elites and their Chinese partners, huh? At the expense of local communities and the environment. 
Yep, yep, yep. Uh, here is six new, uh, six newly described chameleon species uh, reflect Tanzania's eastern arc mountains fragility. This is the latest story. You know, the day they name a species, they put it on the endangered species list. Uh, I love this one. Conservationist should all be feminist. There you go. If you are not a feminist, you cannot be a conservationist. Yes. Uh, this post is a commentary. The views expressed are those of the authors, not necessarily of Manga Bay. Okay, here is more stories about the orangutans getting screwed in Sumatra. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, orangutan sightings are up in farms and settlements recently doesn't mean there's more orangutans, but it means is the animals are being driven out of their forest habitat by ongoing construction of a hydropower plant and dam. We've been uh, talking about this for a couple of years. The construction activity puts added pressure on the already critically endangered Tapanuli orangutan uh, which numbers fewer than 800 individuals scattered in populations that could be cut off from each other by the project. Do you think so? Uh, but we're going to end up as much in Sub-Saharan Africa as anywhere with online trade in arachnids threatens some species with extinction. A recent study reveals a vast and unregulated global trade in invertebrates posing a risk of over-exploitation of some species. Yeah, they found 1,264 species of invertebrates being traded online. <clears throat> Tarantulas are particularly in demand, and Africa is prominent in this trade as both a source and transit hub for tarantulas and scorpions. God, you know, tarantulas and scorpions. Yes, little log. But anyway, it is now a lovely Friday evening in the collapse of global industrial civilization. And I'm going to wrap this up right here. And uh, it is time to, uh, I think it's time to go make a margarita. What do you think? Little one? I think it is time to have a margarita sitting here uh, in the peace and quiet while the biggest party uh, on planet Earth is cranking up one hour from here and uh, <laughs> we will see if I make it to the biggest party on the planet or not not tonight get out there and enjoy the biggest party on the planet while you still can bye guys